What's up, fam? I just did a video a moment ago and I was on my way out the door. Doggone it. <laughs> I got a couple more in me. Um, I wanted to say, well, hey, let's pray. Lord Jesus, let this message glorify you and I repent for, you know, complaining. I'm just joking, Father. I was ready to go to the gym, but at the same time, your words are more important. And I pray that this would hit home with people in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Amen. I wanted to say, cast that, tear down your idols. I just did a video and I was reading from 1 Kings 18 um, about Elijah on Mount Carmel with the false prophets, the contest. The reason for that, to prove who was the real God, uh, Yahweh or the false gods of the land, the Baals, the Ashtoreth poles. The reason for that um, is because the people of God would often be led astray and they would go after false idols. In fact, God would refer to them in the Old Testament. He would say, you are whoring yourself because they would go to the high places, the mountains, and they would offer sacrifices, I believe, to the false gods and do things they should not be doing, perverted things. Yeah. And so God would rebuke them. And sometimes he would turn them over to captivity um, to their enemies because of their rebellion. And then a lot of times they'd come back and they'd repent because he would send a prophet to them to scold them and rebuke them and remind them of the love God had for them. You know, God said, I'm married to the backslider because they were backsliding against him. Because when you know Jesus, when you know Yahweh, you're married to him. And when you are sinning, you're committing adultery against him. And he said, I still love you. I'm married to you, but you're sinning. And so sometimes in our life, we can erect people, things, relationships, um, items, activities in a position of prominence higher than they should be. We put more esteem on them and they become idols. And sometimes these things could be innocent things that aren't even bad things at their core. But because we put greater emphasis on these things, they take the place of God in our lives. Sometimes these things could be Facebook. They can be uh, Instagram. They could be television. They can be whatever we're looking for to find a sense of sufficiency that only God can fulfill. We can go to comic books, movies, food, um, fornication, sex with, with people, different things that we are trying to exalt. Now, let me let me emphasize something. When I said sex or passion outside of marriage that God intended, husband and wife, that is a sin. So you shouldn't be practicing that period. I, I said that because I said moments ago how an idol could be something that's innocent. And that's true. But I need to say, let me let me make it clear as a man of God, that is a sin. Uh, pornography, that's a sin. Um, you know, anything like that, we can put ourselves in jeopardy of, I guess, being in contention with the Lord, you know, because we're elevating something above God and God loves you and he forgives you. But at the same time, he wants you to, he wants your attention. I, now I want to give you an analogy. Let's say you're married and let's say, let's say I'm gonna speak to the men. Let's say you're married, right? And you have your wife at home and she loves to hear about your day. She loves to spend time with you. But let's say what ends up happening is before you get home, you have a conversation with another woman on the phone and you tell her about your day. You spend all that time talking to her about your problems. And then when you get home with your wife, it's late and it's time to go to bed and you give her a few minutes of your time that you go to bed. What did you just do? You committed a major violation. That conversation, that time of intimacy where you were sharing your heart problems with the other woman, that was reserved for your wife. That was sacred. And you went out there and shared that with someone else that was not in the covenant of your marriage. You stepped out and you was out of pocket. Even if there was no physical transgression, no physical act of adultery, you sat there and you shared something special that was meaningful for you and your wife with somebody else. Yo, yeah, she could forgive you, but you, 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 might, you cause some damage with your actions. That's what we do with God. When we step outside of his of, of, of that, that marital covenant between him and we do other things, it's as if we're treating him like he's secondhand. Like, oh, I'll get to you in a minute, God. I'm going to spend time watching TV. I'm going to spend time doing this. I'm going to do all these things and I'll get to you when I have time. And you wonder why you're dissatisfied because what happens is there's a craving that your flesh has that can't be fulfilled because the Bible says the flesh can never be satisfied. And so you start off going after this thing here and looking for satisfaction that only God fulfill, only God can fulfill, and it doesn't work. So you go further, you go further, you go further. Before long, the connection that you had with God, there's like a huge gap between you and God because you strayed. Now he loves you. It says he goes after that one sheep. When there's 99, he goes after that one. And that can be any of us. But what I'm saying to you today is whatever is in your life that God is showing you that is taking up a, a chunk of your time away from him, in a way you're practicing idolatry. Take that idol down.
even if it's un if you got to unplug from television, unplug from Instagram, unplug from Facebook, unplug from some friendships, unplug from going to the gym and spend time in your word. It's put some time in the presence of God because you're feeding your spirit. You're feeding your soul. You're edifying yourself. You're feeding your mind. You're making time for the presence of God and you will hear his voice. The intimacy is increased. It's the same, again, analogy with your wife. Let's say you you guys are becoming so um, you're becoming so accustomed to her that you don't even realize you might be taking her for granted, and maybe you need to just say, you know what, I'm gonna cancel my plans for this. I might even take an all sick day today or call her for work today to, to make time for her. I may need to sacrifice. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but you need to do something. I guess what I'm saying is doing that is a demonstration of how important she is to you. Spending time in the presence of God is a demonstration of how important he is to you. He says, when you seek me, you will find me if you search with all your heart. And let me tell you this, guys, I'm preaching to you, but I'm preaching to myself because I find myself falling short in these areas too. And so I have to be reminded, oh, wait, Lord, I need to go back to my first love, which is you. So that's all I want to say. Um, tear down your idols and he will show you what they are. Sometimes they can be the approval of people. They can be the opinions of others. They can be you trying to have a status. They can be worried about how people perceive you. That's an idol. Because as a Christian, I'm going to tell you something. You can't be so fixated on how people think about you. It doesn't mean you're out there being rude and disrespectful, but it does mean you can't be a prisoner to popular opinion. I can tell you this from experience. There have been times where God has called me to do something where I was obedient and God protected me, but I knew some people didn't like me because I did what I know I was supposed to do. And sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes that's where the rubber meets the road. Sometimes people feel convicted because they see your actions of righteousness and it shows them the opposite of what they're doing it shows them the contrast of your life versus theirs but sometimes that can inspire them to want to do better because they see your act of obedience and so it's not just about you none of us is perfect we all fall short but when you operate in obedience god can use you to win people to him because sometimes people are like afraid to operate in obedience because they're not used to seeing other people do it and they feel alone and so they try to fit in with the world but the Bible talks about not doing that. Romans 12, it says, you are in the world, not of it. But it says, I beseech you, brethren, to live a life holy and acceptable unto God. I think giving your life as a living sacrifice, uh, giving, living a life holy and acceptable unto God. Let me pull it. I got my Bible with me. Hang on, y'all. I'm about to just hang on. Let me put my break on and just let me just go ahead and just go with it. Hang on a second. I might as well. I'm out here in my car. I haven't pulled off yet. Romans 12. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I can be a trip, y'all. Thank God for his grace. If it was just about perfection, I would have been out of there a long time ago. Romans 12. Hold up, hold up, hold up. All right, here we go. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts in one body and we all belong to each other. That's, that's going a little further. But my point in all that, again, the body. And that's, that's another thing to talk about. Um, there's a lot of sins that can impact you, but the one sin that can really impact you is sexual sin. And it says um, no other sin so clearly affects the body. It's in the book of Corinthians. And it talks about when you are intimate with someone, you become one body, one flesh with them, one spirit. And you can really... Um, challenge yourself spiritually because you are the temple of the holy spirit and it's like you're joining idols to your body and i say this because i want to pray with you if you're struggling in that area we can repent together it could be from it can be from watching things you know pornography um not i don't you know only too graphic but you know th things that you shouldn't be doing you know whether it be intimacy with sex with others or even that time by yourself watching porn and things like that and masturbation things like that I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go too deep into all that but i'm just gonna say i want to pray with you because God has a work in your life that he wants to do, but sometimes these things can be a stronghold and God loves you and he forgives you and he doesn't want to shame you, but he does want to address these things. And so I want to, I want to do that with you because 
as a human being, I understand we all fall short, including myself. You know, thank God we have a savior, a high priest who is Jesus Christ, because none of us would make it into heaven without him. Um, and so we want to cast down those idols today. And so before I go any further, I want to say if there's anybody who doesn't have a relationship with God the Father, the way to have one is through his son, Jesus Christ. This comes through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross and that God the Father raised him back from the dead. And if you ask him to be your Lord and Savior, you place your faith in him, he will not only forgive you of your sins, but you will be born again. You will be righteous because the faith that you place in him allows the righteousness of him to become your righteousness. You didn't earn it, but it's given. And when the father sees you, he sees a child of his born again, a son and daughter. And you are written in the book of life, adopted and accepted in the heaven. So just join me in doing this if you want to. Persecution will come as a Christian, but it's a blessing because you get the cross and the crown. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. Just repeat after me. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I confess you as Lord and I confess that I'm a sinner. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead right now. Please come to my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I know I repeated myself a couple times, but if you confess it with him here and believe it here that he died and rose and you ask him to be your Lord and Savior, he'll do that. And so I want to pray another prayer because I'm, and you just put it in your own words, but I'm going to do it first. Lord Jesus, I come before you and I ask for forgiveness in every area of my life, in every area that I have fallen short, Lord, in every area I have had an idol. Tony Evans said, it's coming out of me, that if you can't hear God's voice, there's an idol somewhere. That's true. And so, God, I ask you to help me to tear down my idols and I ask for your forgiveness and I repent. I turn away from that. And God, every sin that's in my life that is not pleasing to you, I ask for forgiveness of and I pray that you would help me to walk in purity in every area of my life, God. Lord, any ungodly soul ties that I may have with anybody, any ungodly alliances through any form of sin, sexual sin, um, through watching things on television, watching movies um, or having these practices with other people either currently or in the past, I repent of right now in the name of Jesus and I renounce any ungodly soul ties, cut those soul ties off in the name of Jesus. And I pray God that you would sanctify me, cleanse me, purify me in every area of my life. And father, I surrender to you and I say, Lord, forgive me. And I receive the sound mind that you provide and the peace that you provide. Father, I repent for double mindedness, Lord. I don't want to be wayward in my faith. One minute serving you, one minute serving the world, walking around chaotic in my spirit. Because you said a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. And so, God, I come before you, humbling myself, yielding myself. My body is a living sacrifice. And I say, help me in every area, God, and give me the courage and the strength and the desire to follow you, but tear down my idols. In fact, Lord, if I'm having a hard time tearing my idol down, I give you permission to tear my idols down in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I speak this over myself, but I also speak this, those who are following, saying in their own way how you lead them to pray this prayer. I pray it applies to them, Lord. And we come into agreement right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, well, I hope you feel better. And I come, oh, let me, one more thing. I come against the spirit of condemnation, Father, because I know how easy it is for us to beat ourselves up when you've forgiven us. And I bind that spirit up in the name of Jesus and send it to the pit of hell. And I speak your peace over myself and over them. We receive your shalom in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. I think I'm done. I'm about to go to the gym. I just want to encourage you guys today. And um, also, I want to say get accountability partners. Get in the body of Christ. Get other friends in the body of Christ that can encourage you. Um, it goes a long way. Just like we read, we are one body with many functions. That was Romans 12. Um, yeah. So my name is Daryl All the Second. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. You know, before I go, hang on, bro. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You know, you already know. You already know. You already know. If there's anybody out there that would like to get a good book, it's on Amazon. Random Thoughts of a Believer, Life Lessons for the Believer, Daryl C. Otter II. It's a very encouraging word, and I think it'll bless you. It's on Amazon. Anyway, gotta go. Much love. Peace.